In 1986, a video game series known as The Legend of Zelda was created by Nintendo. Little did Nintendo know that The Legend of Zelda would go on to be one of the biggest, most revolutionary, most iconic, and by far one of the most successful video game series in history. The chances of the average person knowing of The Legend of Zelda series is very likely. It's one of the many games that are up there with the all-time classics that still live on today. Nintendo was arguably the most iconic video game company in history, creating two of the most successful and most well-known game series ever, Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. Now, being a, well, Zelda channel, we will of course be looking into that series and finding out exactly what makes it such an iconic and also important series to the video game industry. Believe it or not, The Legend of Zelda actually revolutionized gaming not once, but twice. More on that later. So to uncover exactly what makes Zelda games so iconic, so legendary, and so important to the video game world, I got my good friend Croton to join me in this video. So let's uncover what makes Zelda games one of the most iconic and important video game series in history. I believe there's two sides to what makes this series so iconic, along with creating a style of game that can be reused time and time again and still be a huge success. We will cover all of the stuff the series done to change gaming, along with how they make these games so iconic time after time. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the series was introduced in 1986, with the first installment coming out on the 21st of February. This was The Legend of Zelda. The original Legend of Zelda did something no video game had ever really done at the time. It was a fully open world game with save states, hearts, and many other features new to the time. To put it simply, this plain yet adventurous looking game was the start of something new, not just for Nintendo but for the entire video game industry. The Legend of Zelda and its successor, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, were the first two titles in this soon to be long running series. Although they were both very different, the original Legend of Zelda had much more of an influence on the series over the years. Zelda 2 could be seen as the more experimental, but still with the intentions of a Zelda game. That original game laid the groundwork for the series, the hero going out on a quest filled with monsters, dungeons, and of course, slaying the big bad boss at the end. The Groundwork Further down the line, we are presented with the third installment to the series, A Link to the Past. Now, this is where the series started to truly show off some of the original vision of a Zelda game. Well, minus the open world side of things. A Link to the Past really established the style of game The Legend of Zelda was going to be. The first two built the groundwork, but this third title really set the style and tone future games would take, along with adding in some real and in-depth lore to the series, something the first two lacked. These first three games are very important. They basically started the three main factors that would create every future installment. The Legend of Zelda creating the idea and concept of a Zelda game, Zelda 2 bringing in some experimentation, and A Link to the Past establishing the style, the feel, and some lore. These three games got the series running. Fast forward to 1998, this is where the Zelda series would have its biggest, and I'm not joking when I say this, its biggest and most revolutionary change to not just the series, but to the video game industry. In 1998, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released. This game revolutionized the gaming industry more than you can imagine. Ocarina of Time is regarded as the first game to do 3D gaming right. The controls, the overworld, and just about everything else were super impressive for the time. Along with this, the game was the first to perfect lock-on targeting. Technically not the first to include it, but no other game at this time managed to do it as we know it today. You have likely seen lock-on targeting at some point in your gaming experiences. It's simply when you hold a trigger to lock onto a character, an object, or anything really. Ocarina of Time perfected that mechanic. 
something nobody else managed to do. A true revolution and advancement for video games at the time. I mean, look at that advancement now. Lock-on targeting is in so many games we know and love today. Those were some of the biggest advancements the series made. Many people these days don't know or realize that the Legend of Zelda series practically created the open world style, perfected 3D gaming along with cracking the code to a lock-on targeting system. From 1986 to 1998, all of this was achieved, but their story doesn't end there. While making some of the most groundbreaking advancements to the industry, the Legend of Zelda series also managed to create a series with an incredibly impressive formula that could work time after time. If you think about it, many of the games after Ocarina of Time are basically sequels, and this was possible by two factors. Firstly, being the formula that they created leading up to this point, and secondly, being the lore that they established in A Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time. You really don't think about it much when playing through these games, but every game from around Ocarina of Time basically uses the same exact formula, but yet feels very new and very different. But when you look at the basic factors of each game, they all use the same formula. Every game uses mostly the same characters, and a lot of the time, areas are just redesigned, but yet all the games feel unique to each other. So why is this? Well, as just mentioned, they all use the same formula as Ocarina of Time, and reuse a lot of names, areas, and characters, but they all do something unique that surprisingly works. Some of the best examples of how they made it work are Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, and Twilight Princess. These three games all have something in common. They all either add a significant amount of lore to the series, or have major plot twists. The Wind Waker did a good amount of both. It uses the formula Ocarina of Time perfected, but has the twist of the land being flooded, along with the lore behind how the land became flooded. Twilight Princess uses the same formula as Ocarina of Time, but has a massive turning point, Link becoming a wolf, and the entire story behind the Twilight. This game also adds more lore to the series, the failed execution of Ganondorf, the Interlopers, and of course, the Twilight. Then we move to Skyward Sword. With this title, they used that formula from Ocarina of Time, but decided to revise the lore a little and tie a few things together. They went back and covered the events before all of the games, along with having the twist of having part of the world in the sky. Those three games are the biggest examples of how the formula that was perfected in Ocarina of Time was able to be reused over and over again and not get old. The games just needed some twists. It's not just those three, however. Minish Cap had the twist of shrinking down to the Minish, Phantom Hourglass had a similar twist to The Wind Waker, and was actually a sequel to The Wind Waker, and of course Spirit Tracks, which was a sequel to Phantom Hourglass. The point is, Ocarina of Time and all of the games leading up to it created the perfect formula for the series. Every game after Ocarina used that formula, but still worked and felt completely new. That is something many games would struggle to do. Much further down the line, 2017 to be exact, we saw the release of Breath of the Wild, and just from watching the trailers for the game, you could tell that something was different. With Breath of the Wild, they still stuck to the basic formula, Link going to save Zelda from Ganon, but the biggest twist of them all took place with this game. Breath of the Wild was open world. This was probably the biggest change the series had ever made, or was it? You see, Breath of the Wild going open world was actually derived from the original Legend of Zelda and the vision for that game, a fully open world adventure. The developers themselves have even outright said this, a lot of Breath of the Wild was the original vision for Zelda. So basically, the team went back to the very first idea and created the original vision, just with modern technology and the capabilities of creating something magical and amazing. In 1986, that vision for the original Zelda was limited, but with the advancements in technology now, they felt that they could finally make it to some degree. Obviously, the story wasn't the same, but the whole idea of open world was there. Let's just say that they were heavily inspired by the original vision for the series. But what is it that makes them so iconic? Well, in all honesty, I believe it's all of that together. 
The reason The Legend of Zelda series is such an iconic series is primarily down to the advantages for the industry it created, along with creating a formula for each game that can be used time and time again. Ocarina of Time is considered to be one of the best games of all time. That is down to many reasons. But in terms of The Legend of Zelda, it's the perfect Zelda game in a simple and basic form. It was so loved back in the day, and still is today. It's one of the many games from a past generation that still holds up well today, and would easily be picked over some of today's games. Everything leading up to Ocarina of Time was practically the stepping stones for Zelda. Then Ocarina of Time perfected what they wanted to use formula-wise. Everything after Ocarina was them using that immaculate formula created with Ocarina of Time, over and over again. To add to that, the games create an emotional connection to the fan. We play in the footsteps of the hero and sometimes truly feel like we are on an adventure. Many games can't do this the same way. The series is so iconic in many different ways. Those two are just the biggest reasons in my opinion. There are other factors that go into this. The music is unforgettable. The epic dungeons and boss battles are some of the most creative and out there in the video game industry. And something they do really well is linking the games to each other. The best example of this is how in Breath of the Wild, a lot of the soundtrack is actually slower, broken down versions of old tracks. If you listen closely in certain areas, you can and will hear old tracks such as Zelda's Lullaby, the classic Zelda theme, and many more. Those are the main reasons I believe the series has become so iconic. If you have any more, be sure to let me know down below. Thank you for checking out the video, I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go and check out Croton's channel if you did enjoy, he creates a bunch of Zelda videos similar to me. Another huge huge thank you goes to my amazing Patreon supporters. Your support helps myself and the channel out a ton, thank you. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter yourself, then head over to my page and consider pledging as little as $1 a month. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.